hello, hello. I have arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. All right, so, tonight, Arknights. Yeah, not a whole lot to be said on that. You know, we've been playing Arknights for a good while now, so more of the same, I suppose. But yeah, today, er, today, but yes, this week has been uh, a little bit of a long week for me, so I've been uh, a little bit tired, so it's been hard for me to, to get a stream together, and so that is why, uh, yeah, the, we didn't end up doing the Wednesday stream as planned, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm still pretty tired today, so we're probably not going to be streaming for too, too long. But yeah, I know last time around, last time I did a, a short stream, or sort of set out to do a short stream, yeah, it was, it was uh, not quite up to my quality standards. I was very nervous and sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt bad about it, basically. But, you know, it is what it is. But yes. So yeah, anyway, like I said, been a bit of a, a long week for me. But yeah, in general, summer is usually not a great season for me because I'm quite sensitive to the heat. So it's just kind of, uh, just kind of an exhausting time of year overall. But it is what it is. And if all I can do is short streams for now or for a little while, that will be what, what it will be. So yes, so currently the plan is to do the, the mission that we have been stuck on, Operation 4-7. Yeah, we did actually, I believe that was on stream, that we did actually succeed it. We did actually beat it, but we were using a, uh, we were playing practice mode on it. So we didn't get a proper completion of it. So I would like to beat it properly. Ideally have a slightly more successful run of it, though. I will accept what I can, what I can get. But yes. Um, yeah, following that, uh, I don't think we'll be making any more story progress. Probably we will just be doing side missions. And, yeah, once again, this is planned to be a short stream, so we honestly might not have time to do much in the way of side content. But yes, we'll do what we can. <laughs> we'll do what we can. But yeah. I think, yeah, a important lesson. You know, I'm usually... I'm usually not too... Uh, not too upfront with my sort of behind-the-scenes thought thoughts. My personal thoughts. But I think this is something that could be applicable to other people. So it's valuable for me to share it. But yeah, I think it'd be, it's, yeah, important to make the best of whatever you, whatever you have available to you. You know, I've only got so much time, so much energy today. So, you know, I want to, rather than thinking of how much better the stream could be, if, you know, things were different, I can just do what I can with what I've got. And that is what we will do. So, let's see. So I was initially planning on doing a stream tomorrow. I say initially as if it has begun <laughs> or if anything concrete has been decided, but, but yes, I had said on Twitter, more accurately, I suppose, that I was planning on doing a stream tomorrow, probably around 8.30 p.m. But yeah. I don't want to say conclusively anything just yet, but most likely, most likely that will, most likely I'm not going to do that. In short, we'll see he on the day of, but, you know, after, after today and just sort of the week, I kind of want to get some extra rest if I can, so. But yes, anyway, so that is this week's schedule. May or may not be streaming tomorrow. We are streaming right now and we'll continue to do so until such time as it feels appropriate to end. And then next week, ideally, we should be back to a normal schedule. We will see about things. And again, if I have to stream a little bit shorter than usual, I will simply do that. Yeah, part of what uh, drove me 
Dr'eh. What troubled me so much about that one stream that I was mentioning is how I felt the need to get through the uh, operator spotlight very quickly. And uh, it just sort of set a bad, set a bad tone for the rest of the stream going forward in my mind because I felt hurried and not quite satisfied with it, with what I was doing throughout the whole thing. So on that note, while I do have an operator spotlight prepared, we're not going to go over it this time. Just going to play the game and just going to relax a little bit, I think. That is going to be our main mission here today. And so, without further ado, video games. But yes, given that we have plenty of sanity to spare, and I'm confident that we will get this done, considering that we have gotten this done before, I think we're going to just not practice. Just going to do the mission normally. Honestly, I could probably just do that anyway, just not use practices. Of course, you know, the issue there is that if we do run into an, a time when I'm, or if I do have a stream where I'm playing for an extended period of time, we could run out of sanity, and if I don't have any sanity potions on hand, we'd have to uh, cut things early, which would not be ideal. So I suppose, also sip, by the way, I suppose even if it's not necessarily, yeah, even if I, you know, would prefer to just win when I win and not have to go through another time after the practice, there's still some value in practicing. But yes, so we went over the strategy last time. I haven't actually had the energy to practice this off stream. It occurs to me that I don't remember what my strategy was very well. I was just about to say that I'm probably going to be somewhat rusty. Uh, indeed I am. So, give me a moment to try and consider. So, I believe we are placing Ponsiris and uh, Texas roughly here. We learned that one of the, I think the higher up uh, slug when it detonates doesn't do, doesn't have enough of a blast radius to actually damage upon Cyrus, which was good to learn. But yeah, the lower one I think might have, but I don't remember all that well. But yeah, so we're going to want to yeah deploy. Let's see, right? Because deploying over here with Frost Leaf and Gummy worked well, but it didn't work that well. But yeah, I think part of the issue there may have just been that Gaviel, since she's has the, you know, healing over time effect, is probably a little bit less geared towards providing immediate healing, at least when compared to Hibiscus, for instance. So we might want to instead position, uh, we might want to instead position Hibiscus, you know, uh, or yeah. Position Hibiscus forward, position Gaviel in the rear. I'm trying to remember, how did I place them all? I think, yeah, Hibiscus... Yeah, I think we placed Hibiscus on this tile facing upwards. I believe we placed Gaviel on this tile facing forwards. Either this one or this one should be equally applicable for Gaviel, I believe or uh, rather for Hibiscus, given that what we are planning on. But I want to place her a little bit further backwards, just to make her a little bit safer from these slugs. But yes, of course, once we get the opportunity to, we'll want to place Jessica up here. Now that I think about it, I probably should have equipped Jessica with her first skill, because I don't think her second one is going to be all that useful. Her first one would almost certainly proc at least one time every time she was fighting a drone. And part of the issue was just that drones were getting through our defense. But yes, Manticore did fine, if not exceptionally. Astesia also did fine. She did exactly what she was asked what was asked of her and she did it well. One one change that I did think about making but that I had forgotten uh 
by the time that we started this mission. And I suppose we can still back out now. But one thing that I had thought about was switching out Astesia for a lower cost unit. And uh, possibly a Charger Vanguard who is able to, one, get all of their deployment point cost back when you retreat them. And two, able to generate a deployment point for every enemy that they defeat. Because yes, our main usage of Astesia here is basically just to be placed here and just to kill these specific slugs, these two specific slugs. So, you know, any unit who can accomplish that is fine, basically. It doesn't really matter if they survive afterwards because we're going to retreat them immediately afterwards. But yes. So one way or the other, we do need to deal with these slugs up here first. And the way we did that last time was by deploying meteorite facing upwards. So we'll probably do the same thing. I can't remember if we placed meteorite on this tile on the right, or if we placed her on the tile on the left. The tile on the left allows her to cover all of the slugs. The tile on the right doesn't necessarily have much in the way of tactical benefit for us, but it does allow us to place our medic further to the left sooner, rather than having to wait until she's been retreated. Though I don't think Meteorite was in our final formation, so it shouldn't matter too, too much. But yes. Again, having low-key kind of forgotten a lot of this, uh, we're just going to have to play it by ear a little bit. My hammer's not so weak. I believe Pond Cyrus was on the top rank, though I suppose it doesn't matter too much. Ready to heal. Let's begin. But yes, Texas's sword reign is definitely an ability that was playing an important role. So we will not Pardon. We won't want to. We won't want to uh, neglect that. But yes, deploying meteorite early will allow us to make use of uh, her abilities. There we go. And hopefully, hopefully, we shouldn't have too much of an issue here. I think if we place Gaviel thus. We should be okay. I don't think this is going to ruin anything. Another little optimization I thought of is that we maybe could place Astesia facing upwards. There we go. Okay, now we're going to get the drones. So we, we are going to need Jessica's assistance. One mistake that we made on at least one run of this mission was we placed Jessica after that slug had started uh, to detonate. Stevia might actually be able to take out all of these guys now that I uh, am seeing her. So that's good. Um, ah. Okay, yeah, Stevia has uh, survived and done perfectly. Very good. Okay. So, now that we have things as they are, now we need to start thinking about how we're going to deploy, uh... Yes, we need to, uh... Think about how we want to deploy, uh... Fire Whistle. So yes, previously... Previously, deploying Fire Whistle slightly forward... We can pause this, I don't... I don't know why I'm feeling the need to do this while everything is running, that's why we lost Meteorite. But yes, anyway... So, deploying Fire Whistle slightly forward allows us to, you know, start using her abilities sooner, which is nice. But it's not that valuable, I don't think. It's not that necessary. Plus, being, yeah, having sort of the range, having her range overlap with the positions that we were deploying uh, Frostleaf and Gummy meant that slugs that she would defeat would also uh, explode near Frostleaf and Gummy, which uh, was bad for them, as you may guess. So, instead, let's not do that. But yes, 
So, I do want to place Gummy quite forward if I can. This might be a little bit more forward than we maybe ideally should. Yes. Yes, Manticore. Yeah, we did uh, did lose Manticore earlier than expected. Hmm. So yes, we do need to deploy. Yeah, do need to deploy. Ah, right. I forgot. I forgot. We did have a uh, part of the issue is that we had. Ooh, this is bad. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, so we had the team... Ooh, Jessica's not going to survive that. But yes, we've had the team outfitted for a strategy that we're no longer using. So that's part of our issue here. Alright, fire. Yeah, fire. Or Crossleaf did not survive. That's approximately what I expected. Um, <laughs> it's certainly not what I was hoping for, but it was what I expected once we... Uh, I started to see what was going on there. Anya will survive that. Estesia won't be healed if she's placed there, so there's really no reason to put her there. Hmm. Fire Whistle is doing okay. Ah, I stopped paying attention to Gummy and now she has been defeated. So yes, this is definitely challenging. I don't think we're going to succeed here, but we can certainly try. Yes, we might. Those casters have quite some range on them, don't they? Um, okay, yeah, we've almost certainly lost, but maybe not. Hmm. No, it's not looking so good. Um, Alright, so our defensive line has crumbled, um, and yes, we have lost. So yes. Hmm. I may have underestimated this operation. I may have too. But yes. So, definitely a lot of places to improve upon there. Astesia did just fine, so I don't think we need to worry about her. Gaviel, I think we need to... I think we need to, yeah, switch her over to her automatic skill. Because, yes, you know, sort of the trade-off is that automatically activated skills like that are usually less impactful immediately, but they're more likely to be impactful or, like, they happen more often, basically. And, like, there wasn't any, like, one time when we needed big healing... But just having sort of her average healing be better would be would have been good. Yeah, same thing with Gummy. I was kind of banking on I was banking on her first skill to be able to heal Manticore. Because I usually use her first skill and I just completely forgot that she didn't have it equipped right now. But yes. Fire Whistle. I'm honestly fine with Fire Whistle's skill. I've thought about it a little bit one way or the other, but I think it's fine. Yes, we're going to switch over Just Jessica's as well. Hibiscus only has the one skill, so we don't need to think about that. Frostleaf? Hmm. I don't know about Frostleaf, to be honest, because we're not really relying on her for her skill. So we could... It could go either way, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think that... I don't know. I think that with Frostly, we're probably going to want to switch to her or keep her second skill simply because we're going to be in situation or we're going to be in a situation at a certain point where we're just going to need to have consistent extra damage output from her. But yeah, another thing that I think that I was missing there... Well, we were certainly missing extra damage from Manticore not surviving... Again, part of the issue from that was that she didn't get healed when I was planning on her getting healed. 
but another issue was simply the fact that she, uh, yeah, she didn't get healed when I was expecting her to get healed, and she also, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Didn't get healed, and, uh, her dodge, I don't think, rocked there quite as much as it had previously, which, you know, it is what it is. It's only a percent chance, so there's nothing I can really do about that. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Ideally, I'd like for it to be... I'd like to have a slightly more reliable solution, but again, there's not really much that can be done in that regard. I briefly had the thought of maybe placing a ranged unit here, facing like this, perhaps, but that's almost certainly not a good idea. Yeah, almost certainly not a good idea. I don't think that will benefit us very much because they will get shot to pieces by the drones and also by the casters. But yes, we would need to be very aggressive and forward with a medic to make that happen, and I, I just don't see that. I guess it's just as well, because despite all my talk of playing through this mission for real, I did forget to uh, actually start it for real. So yes, Jessica has her automatic skill, just a straight damage buff every so often. Yeah, Hibiscus, like we said, is fine. Fire Whistle is, has the skill that I think would be most applicable. Gaviol should be good. Meteorite, we already have switched over to a automatic skill. On Cyrus and Texas, both have skills that I want them to have. Amia. I don't really know what to think about Amia, to be honest. We could maybe use a different operator in place of her, though I don't know really who would be a great choice. There's definitely a lot of characters I have in mind that we could use for this, but we've done it before with this team, and I kind of want to stick with it. Yes. So. My hammer's not so weak. Indeed. So yes. So hopefully with a little bit less hesitation and a little bit more familiarity, we will be able to win the day. So yes. So. We do want to have a medic sooner rather than later. Yes, because if we are not careful, then while this uh, is all going on, then Pon Cyrus is going to start taking more damage than I was sort of planning on sooner than I would like, which is no good. So, with that said, we will place Gaviel here. The slugs behind or near Gaviel aren't going to be an issue too much, I don't think. On, yes, they shouldn't have the opportunity to become an issue, basically. But yes, Asthesia is more than capable, as we have seen, of dealing with all of this. And then, I think we might be able to get away with deploying... Uh, I was going to say get away with deploying Jessica a little bit sooner. That would have been a very bad idea because of the explosion. We've already been over this. But yes, Asthesia is doing just fine. But yes, no problem. So yes, we are in a situation that's not great. It's not the worst. It could be worse. It could be a lot worse. We are going to lose Meteorite, I think. Though actually, no because that caster is being blocked now, so they're fine. On, um, yes. So, Fire Whistle, here. Gummy, here. Frostly, here. Okay. So yes, I think... How do we want to swing to this? Um, you need to leave. Medic. Uh, we want to place the Medic further back, I think. Texas can probably be retreated soon-ish. Alright, we're doing okay. I suppose we might as well wait to... Yeah, that's sort of the issue that we were facing before with... Uh... That's the issue that we were facing before with... Uh... Oh dear. 
Ah, it was too close to Jessica. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So we need Manticore, like, now. Um, we need to... Do ah, no. I was gonna say, we need to retreat Texas, but yeah, we've already lost her. Or we've lost, uh, the opportunity to get, uh, that back. Yeah, I was gonna say, having Texas there later than we were sort of planning on was very bad. Okay, we're good on this front. Yeah, having Texas there was very bad for us because that meant that Gaviel was having to split up her healing. Hmm. I wonder if actually... It would mean placing her outside of healing range, which would be untenable. Never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, it could be... We could maybe think about placing Jessica up here, but no, that's that's not a practical choice because she'd be out of healing range, which would mean that the drones would uh, shoot her to pieces. So yeah. So part of the issue, I think, is just the fact that we're really not getting the use out of Gaviel. Or not Gaviel. Um, unfortunate. But yes, we're not getting the use out of uh, Manticore that we had been before. Unfortunate there. Um, hmm. Yes, this is going a lot worse uh, than previous attempts, to be honest. Oh. Oh, we already had an enemy get past us. I don't... Uh, I hadn't seen that, to be honest. Hmm. Yes. So. I'll do my best to take care of everyone. Clearly, uh, the strategy I thought of wasn't as good as I had thought it was. But yeah, getting Texas off the field sooner would probably be to our benefit. I think I might be... I might honestly be placing Frostleaf and or Gummy a little bit too forward. Yes, I had hesitated a little bit that last round. You probably saw it in uh, using Pon Cyrus's skill because I wanted it to sort of get the best use out of the, the damage bonus by only activating it once there were enemies within range to uh, damage with said bonus. But yes, I think it's probably to my benefit to have it sort of active sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think it's to my benefit to have it active sooner rather than later, because, uh, yeah, the sooner that we have it active, the sooner we can have it active twice, and the sooner we have it active twice, the sooner that we can, uh, yeah, the sooner that we can, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, the sooner that it, we will have sort of the permanent buff. And that's very nice. So, yes. So... It feels a little bit uh, intimidating to me, but I do kind of want to deploy, or I want to uh, get Texas out of here as soon as I can, to be honest. That caster is going to defeat Meteorite if I give her the chance, so let's not give her the chance. Texas is no longer strictly necessary. We're going to move Gummy and Frostleaf back, but we are going to keep them roughly where they are going to deploy... It might be better to deploy Fire Whistle somewhat more forward now. So again, yeah, her attack range is never not going to overlap with their positioning now that we sort of have them where they are. But by having... Uh, yeah, having uh, her forward a little bit more, we will at least make it less... well a little bit less likely that the slugs are going to uh, 
be in a position to cause significant harm to, say, Jessica, who is uh, very important for this strategy. Freeze. Yes. We're actually in a position where we could reasonably deploy Amia here. And Jessica has been lost to us. Um, so... Having another another sniper on call would be nice. Let's take them all out. Yeah, I guess this isn't necessary and is extraordinarily suboptimal and also uh, benefited us none. Um, so maybe don't do that in the future. <laughs> hmm. Yes, this is not so good. I feel like... I feel like Hibiscus is attacking somewhat slowly. Or er, attacking healing somewhat slowly. Alright. Hmm. So yeah, I guess, yeah. Part of the issue that we're having on that bottom rank is just that we don't have very much damage. So we might actually want to deploy them even further backwards, honestly. Because yeah, I was thinking placing them as forward as possible would be to our benefit generally. But I honestly don't think that anymore. I don't really know why I was thinking that, it just sort of felt intuitive to me. You know, I wanted to stop enemies as sooner rather than later, I guess. But... Yeah. So yeah, so part of the issue... Yeah, okay, we're not going to win that. Hmm. Retreat! Back to the stronghold and regroup! But, I do have a strategy now. I do have another strategy now. So, Jessica, even without Power Strike Beta, did have enough damage on her to take out drones. Smokescreen, well, hmm. I was going to say, Smokescreen would give her dodge, but that's only a 75% dodge chance, which is... Anything less than 100% chance is not something I really want to base my strategy on. I guess, if again, if my goal is just to win, then that's, you know, those are pretty good odds, to be honest. So, I don't know. If we want to just try to get a solution that works for today. That's a decent choice. Though again, with how Manticore has been somewhat underperforming, I do kind of worry. I do kind of worry. I think probably part of the issue with Manticore is just that I'm deploying her a little bit too late, and so enemies are sort of starting to get to her a little bit earlier. But yeah, so again, part of the problem on the bottom rank is that we just don't have a lot of damage going through. So we might actually, honestly, want to swap out Frostleaf for another sniper. An AoE sniper could be good. I think we, we should be good on this, but just uh, to be safe. But yes. Um, who else do we have? I guess, well, we've got, uh, we've got a uh, meteorite. She's still there, of course, but of course we are going to have the issue with meteorite that, uh, she's probably going to be on cooldown at that point. So who else do we have? I guess we don't necessarily need AOE. What we need is DPS and DPS Sometimes doesn't mean, you know, or, eh. Yeah, DPS. That is what, uh, that is the... Pardon. Alright, I've completely lost my train of thought. Anyway, DPS. So we want DPS, we want to take out enemies quickly. We don't necessarily need to be able to take out a whole lot at once. We just need to keep them from sort of building up. And, yeah, with that in mind, 
a pretty good unit for killing things quickly is bum, 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 bum. Squad combat? Exusii. So yes, Gummy's performance uh, hasn't really uh, improved since switching over to her other skill. And we did make use of cooking to avoid death by way of raising Gummy's defense. So that's probably good. Gaviel was doing fine. Uh, nothing really to say about her performance. Again, Hibiscus can't have a different skill. Um, Fire Whistle is doing fine. Not much to be said, I don't think. We could, again, maybe have her do Wildfire to do extra damage a little bit more often. We could also, I'm realizing a lot of my operators just don't have very high skill levels. Yeah, the only operators whose skills that I've invested much in, I think, are probably our vanguards. And Manticore, I suppose. Um, maybe more than, than I was thinking, but yeah, not a lot of them have a whole lot of skill on them. Again, maybe more than I was thinking. Ibiscus could definitely use some, some more skill, especially since she's a three-star, so she has a pretty low max level. Um... But yes, getting some more healing is good. Yeah, skill curves drastically increase at four and seven. Okay. Thank you for the thank you for the uh, advice there. But yes, what did we end up with hibiscus at four? Okay. So yeah, fire whistle we could also improve. I'm honestly a little bit leery of improving fire whistles damage at this point because part of the issue is just that things are dying too fast too close to our more forward units. So, hmm. Fire Whistle might be fine as she is right now. Jessica could be improved upon. Being able to take out enemies faster would also be quite useful to Jessica because that just means that there's a better chance that she's not going to uh, have slugs near her. Because if she can take out drones faster, then she can turn her attention back to the slug sooner. But yes. Gummy. Um, Gaviel. Again, we're not facing any issues with Gaviel. She's fine. I think we're okay for now. We've made the revisions that I think would be beneficial to us. So let's give this one more try. Yep, four seven. But yes, this has been a, a bit of a challenging map for us. But, but yes, four seven coincidence. Yes. All right. So, activate this sooner rather than later. Deploy meteorite as soon as we can. Yeah, wait a little bit on Texas, because I want to be able to get enemies in range, so that we can reduce the amount of damage going on to Pon Cyrus. So yes, now we deploy Gaviel. So yes, as soon as we can, we will deploy Astesia. Any second now, there we go. Yes, we're doing just fine otherwise. Yes, those slugs will go down before too long. If you want treatment, yeah, again, there's a part of me that still wants to try deploying Jessica further north, but I know that that's not going to serve us very well. So, yes. Don't get yourself killed, dummy. So... Um, I'll wait until the casters are in range because they are an issue and I want to put a little bit of extra damage on them. I should have uh, retreated Astesia a little bit sooner. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. There we go. Alright, so most of the big deals are dealt with now. Um, again, I'm a little bit worried about how I want to deploy Gummy and Frostleaf. Oh wait, we don't have Frostleaf anymore, never mind. Let me 
create a diversion. Come on, get it together. Right. So now that we've sorted that out. Artilleryman in position. This should be okay. I'm a little bit worried now because now I've pay for that. You know. Got it. We had been planning around uh Frostleaf being here, and then I kind of Yeah, we love the order of operations, indeed. But yes, I'd been planning on yeah, on uh, Frostleaf being here, and then I kind of forgot that uh, Frostleaf wasn't going to be here. Hmm. Yes, once again, we've had the same issue with Jessica. Hmm. So how do we want to revise this? I think the natural, the natural change would be... I was going to say the natural change would be to place Pon Cyrus forward, but actually we could place her further back. That would actually be better, now that I think about it. Because, yeah, placing Pon Cyrus... Well, no, placing Pon Cyrus backwards would still means that, that Jessica is within explosion range of the slugs, which is not good. So, yes, yeah, so we do need to place Pon Cyrus forwards. But, if we do that... Hmm, actually, what we could do instead is we could just change up how we're deploying. Because, yeah, there's no specific reason that Fire Whistle, for instance, needs to be in this specific tile. She could just as easily be down here, for instance. And we could just, like, swap around the sort of... Well, hmm. Yeah, again. Okay. There's no reason that we need to have... Hmm. Okay, I was thinking for a moment if it would be to our benefit to, for instance, face Hibiscus upwards so that she could heal Jessica if need be. But I don't think the issue with Jessica is that she's, you know, taking one too many hits. The issue is that slugs are exploding near her. And when slugs explode near her, she dies. Yeah. Might need more... Yeah, more anti-air on top instead of more damage in front of Ponsiris. Yeah, definitely more anti-air is what we've been needing because the drones have been the biggest issue. Like they, you know, Jessica pretty much inevitably explodes and then, you know, we're just kind of out of luck. Hmm. But yes, so... We definitely need... Yeah, how strong is your gummy currently? Evidently not strong enough. <laughs> um, part of it, I think, is just kind of poor luck. Because uh, with uh, Manticore, you're getting good use out of Manticore previously. Are we going to be able to stop these drones? I do not think so. But yes, with Manticore previously, we were getting a lot of... Uh, survivals on her that were perhaps somewhat unlikely. Hmm. Okay, hold on. One thought. Having just looked at Amia there, Amia has... She survived a slug explosion and the second one took her out there. She has 87 uh, defense and 485 HP compared to Jessica's more defense, but less HP. In fact, yeah, about 100 less HP. So yeah. So probably, given that, I think... What we'd been seeing is the, is Jessica being taken out by a single slug explosion. Yeah, Gummy couldn't heal Manti fast enough, she was still cooking. Yeah. That was part of the issue. Again, the, the biggest issue, I think, was just the fact that I was relying on... Manticore's dodge, which is only a 50% chance. So, yeah. That was doing us well earlier, but again, the issue is just that it's percentage-based. It's a it's a random chance, so I just it just didn't proc for me as well as it did last time around. Yeah. Gummy needed to uh, finish cooking earlier. 
Yeah, again, we tried using provisions previously, but we didn't really get much better use out of that. Yeah, Manticore. I don't know that Xuxiai was a good choice where we placed her. I think we've... <laughs> we might have just wanted to keep her in reserve, basically, as an extra... Yeah, keep her in reserve as an extra sort of source of uh, anti-air. Though, hmm... We, we'd probably just run into the same issue, though, with Exusii replacing Jessica, in that she'd just explode at some point. She does have more HP than Jessica. Not a whole lot. Yeah, Xuxi damage is really high. She could handle bottom lane alone with only Gummy as a block. Hmm. But yeah, that's sort of what we were going for. But then the issue is that, you know, the units up top were, uh, or we were losing our uh, anti-air up top, as you had observed. Hmm. If we could... Well, no. I was going to say, if we could afford to place Ponsiris later on, but that's not uh, practical. But yeah, we definitely would need to place Ponsiris before Jessica. I was thinking that maybe we could... Well, no, because even if we place Ponsiris later and she was a higher priority to the drones, the issue is not that the drones are killing Jessica. The problem is that Jessica is being exploded by slugs. So... I think probably the biggest change that we could easily make that would uh, help our position would be to place Ponsiris one... Yeah, Spiders deal 1,600 damage upon death, if that helps. That does help a lot. I actually looked for that information online, but I wasn't able to find it. Yeah, I didn't look, I guess, too, too hard. But, yeah, the my usual sources for Arknight's information are... Uh, yeah, didn't have that that damage number. But yes. Hmm. Yeah, wiki.gg is helpful if you're searching about about enemies. I was using the wiki.gg, I guess. Hmm. I didn't know that they had enemy damage on there. Yes, infused originium slug. Yeah, I've been ex I've been pretty extensively, uh, yeah, looking at the wiki for, I guess, mostly character information. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that, that it also had information about the slugs and whatnot. Or, well, I knew it had information about enemies, but... Um, hmm. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I guess... Okay, yes. <laughs> anyway. So, no time for me to, to look at the wiki, because we are uh, a little bit late. Mentioned the explosion does four times their attack. Yeah, I miss I missed that, because I was just, I was kind of looking for just a straight up, like, just a number. Like, just a, you know, this is how much damage the explosion does. Just a flat number. So, yeah, that was, uh, that's on me for overlooking that. But yeah, I didn't, uh... I didn't actually, again, I didn't know that the, the wiki.gg, like, actually had the, the enemy stats on it. But yeah. I feel like I had looked at it before and, like, not seen them, but... I don't know. Again, maybe I just... Maybe I just wasn't, uh... I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But yes. So, with that in mind... With that in mind, that does raise... Oh, hold on. Oh. I just realized I was looking at the wrong number for Amiya's health. Um, okay. So yeah, Amiya has 1400 health. I got her health and her attack confused. So after seeing that uh, 1060 number and looking at her at her attack again, thinking it was her health, I got, I got confused and thought, surely... Surely Jessica or surely Amia doesn't have enough defense to survive that much damage. But uh but no, we're good. We have solved the mystery. Um so yes. So Amia and Amia can definitely survive 
one slug exploding. Jessica! Um, let's see. Uh, no, she can definitely not survive a single slug exploding. So that's a little bit unfortunate for her, but, you know, such is life. So we definitely need to be careful how we deploy Jessica in that case. I guess another thing that we could do is instead we could place Jessica like here. That's kind of a desperate strategy though. And one I really don't want to do because uh, yeah, if we were to do that, then Jessica would like only be able to do anti-air. And while that's useful, I do want her to be able to damage enemies like, you know, out and about. And it would give her very little time to deal with the drones. And it would give the drones a lot of time to shoot uh, upon Cyrus, for instance, which I also don't want. But yes, all that being said, once again, yeah, Jessica will not survive a single slug no matter what. We can't do anything about that, so it doesn't really matter... Like I was, like I was suspecting, positioning Hibiscus such that she could heal Jessica won't help because the, the again the issue is a single explosion takes her out. If fire whistles in front of Jessica, I suppose we could try that. I'd been wanting to place fire whistle further back to try to you know just generally take advantage of. Well, yeah, actually that's a really good idea. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, because yeah, I was wanting to place her f further back so that I'd so we'd sort of maximize the time with enemies like in front of her because like, you know, placed here her two spaces that she can't cover would be covered by, uh, on, on Cyrus here. And then just sort of, you know, a gap here, most enemies would be stopped by Pon Cyrus anyway. But if we were to place her here, then she can't deal damage here and here can deal damage here and here um which i again i'd sort of wanted to avoid having any space that she can't cover but but again part of our issue is the fact that previously with uh frostleaf was the fact that um the area that fire whistle covered overlapped the area where frostleaf was you know positioned such that Frostleaf would uh, explode also when slugs were detonated by Fire Whistle. So again, we've struggled a lot with Fire Whistle taking out enemies too quickly, or uh, taking out enemies at an inopportune location. So placing her further forward would actually probably be really beneficial to us. And yeah, with, with her defense... It's not, like, incredible, given that she is uh, a fortress rather than, uh, or she's, you know, more of a damage defender than a defense defender. But her talent will give her a defense bonus. But yeah, she is still a defender, that is true. But yeah, I do believe that with her skill active... Pon Cyrus definitely has a lot more defense with her skill active. Um, Fire Whistle has more HP, but Pon Cyrus also gets an HP buff. What is the amount of her? Okay, so 11%. Um, so yeah, so... Okay. Let me crunch some numbers here, do some math. Yeah, so Pon Cyrus... Whoops. Actually, why not put the calculator here? Um, so yes. So Pon Cyrus has uh, 291 attack, or 291 defense. But yes, with uh, the aid of Engineer's Wish, that is... 421.95. So yes. So she does have higher base defense than Fire Whistle, but what I also need to keep in mind is that Fire Whistle's talent. <laughs> this is the first time I'm a streamer that cares to calculate. I love doing math. <laughs> I love doing math, to be honest. But yeah, I like I like solving math problems. It was one of my favorite uh, uh, favorite subjects in school. Anyway, 
So yes. So one thing that I also overlooked was Fire Whistle has flexible fighter, which grants her a defense bonus while she's blocking. So that is an 8%. Yeah, same. Nice. But yes. So I'm confident that yeah, three point or three hundred and fifteen times uh one point zero eight. Yeah. Like I was thinking, that's not quite as much. Again, she does have a lot more health. Well, a lot is maybe a strong word, but she has more health. So she'll be doing okay. Ponsiris does still have the advantage in defense. But, you know. Again, we want to make use of Fire Whistle's artillery. We want to make use of Fire Whistle's artillery because it it has been doing good. Uh, most enemies have 100 defense. Her attack still punch through. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we want to make use of Fire Whistle's artillery as much as possible. But again, we want to make use of that in a position where she's not likely to uh, explode one of our units by detonating a slug at a... Uh, <laughs> detonating a slug at an inopportune location. Yes, this I think, I think we, I'm pretty sure I said that last, uh, the, uh, last run was going to be the last run of the stream, but, uh, now that I've had, or now that we've had, uh, a little revelation, I do want to, uh, want to try again. Yes, please do take them all out, Meteorite, I'd really appreciate that. Yes, that will be fine. Deploy Gaviol. Yeah, given how we've been using Astesia now, I do think that she's in an okay position. Come on, get it together. Yeah, I think that uh, where she, where we've got her is fine. Time to open fire indeed. But yes. It would be, and maybe I could improve her skill, because I, it occurs to me that I don't know if I've upgraded, uh, hmm, let me think about this a little bit, because I was going to just deploy Jessica again, but Exusiae does have, <gasps> oh, I just realized, Exusiae has enough damage to survive a slug exploding. Okay. I was going to, I was thinking about deploying her just for her extra damage, but, uh, actually, this might be what we've been waiting for. You create a diversion. Come on, get it together. Six star stat moment. Yep. Oh, oh, what, what on earth? Awaiting orders. Why did, okay, I wasn't paying attention there. Um, and now I regret that because why did, why did Asthesia die? That was weird. That's not happened before. Yeah, that's... I don't... <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Uh, frame skilling... Frames, uh, frame skipping killed Asthesia. Hmm. Yeah, that was... That was weird. <laughs> um, now I'm worried for Exusiae. Um... All right, hold on. We need to make that plug. Uh, okay, we've waited too long. Okay, Exusia, I think, is going to go down. Oh, wait, right. Exusia, I can survive. Okay. Okay, so. Pardon. I need a moment to uh, regain myself now that uh, everything has happened so much. Okay, so. Fire whistle immediately. Immediately. Um... This is probably a suboptimal, but it is what it is. Okay. Yeah, things went down and, and went up. Yep. Um. Hmm. Okay. One issue that we're running into here is that um, fire whistle. Yeah, the issue we're having with fire whistle is that the slugs. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to lose Exusii there. Um, and, um, how do... Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, um... Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, the issue that we were... Okay. Okay. So yes. So the issue with uh, using... Um, unfortunate. Yeah. Did mean that fire was a good tank. Drones, not bombs. Okay, gotcha. But yes. Um... Where was I? Uh, okay. So, let me take a moment to gather myself again. So, yes. So, part of the issue I was thinking of there, on that same vein of Aesthesia being good for drones and not bombs, is, uh, yeah, or uh, not Aesthesia, sorry, Fire Whistle, is that uh, one big issue in using uh, her here at all is that, yeah, her flexible fighter only takes uh, effect when she's blocking, but she's not blocking when the when the uh, slug explodes. So, I was about to say I think we've lost, but maybe not. Yes, hello, Ragnarok puppy. Thank you for dropping by. Um, hmm. All right, so we have lost, but it's fine because we have learned a little bit. I may have underestimated this operation. Hmm. So yes, thinking that through a little bit. But yeah, Estesia dying when she did threw me off. I don't think it really. Well, no, it did. It was very bad for us because yeah. I mean, even if it. Even if all it did was distract me, that was bad. Um, so yeah. Thinking about this a little bit more. Thinking about this a little bit more. How would we want to swing this? Um, I don't know. It might be... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I wanted to wrap things up, so I think we're going to wrap things up. Yeah, last time he dropped Astesia and, slun and stunned the slugs using Texas. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize that that had uh, lined up, because I definitely wasn't doing that intentionally. Hmm. But yeah, um, I don't know, I do want to think about that a little bit more. I don't know. I think I'll just have to, like, watch the VOD, basically, and think about it then, because, yeah, we are running a little bit later than I had uh, been hoping for. It's not super late. I mean, on an ideal day, this would probably... I'd probably want to be, you know, closing up at about this time anyway. But, yeah, this is later than I was thinking, so I don't want to push it too much. But, yeah. Placing... Yeah, placing Firewatch forward or fire whistle forward was okay, but not great, I don't think. Honestly, I think it might have been a better idea to place Ponsiris forward. Oh, actually, no. Now that I think about it, that would be untenable. <laughs> I could not do that because I wouldn't be able to heal her. Um, so, yes. So, fire whistle being forward was okay, but it didn't, um, I guess, hmm, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, well, hmm, so yeah, Exusii being where she was, was probably a good choice, that was probably a good swap, because Exusii can survive a slug explosion. And the issue was just that every time a slug got to Jessica, she would simply perish. So, having Exusii in position is probably okay. Probably a decent choice for that. <clears throat> okay, I think I'm, we're just going to have to think about this later, because again, it's a little bit late. 
I was a little bit tired to begin with, and I'm... My mind is rushing with all sorts of new tactical ideas. Um, so I think it's probably for the best if we if we simply wrap up and give myself some time to think when I've uh, had some time to rest. So, that being said, it is time to wrap up. Um, so yeah. So, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a raid target for myself. And with that, let us go over the schedule. Ah, thank you for the follow, Ragnarok Puppy. So yes. So, once again, currently considering streaming this Saturday, but I might take that time off. Um, because again, I've just kind of, uh, been a little bit, uh, a little bit exhausted this week in general. A little bit exhausted this week in general. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm tired, basically. So, we'll see, we'll see how I'm feeling on Saturday and make decisions based on that. Otherwise, next week we should be back to the usual schedule, ideally. So, Wednesday should be Arc Nights. And then Friday uh, is to be determined based on uh, Sheps' availability for the collab. Yeah, if Sheps is not available, then we will, of course, do more Arc Nights. Yes, the Wednesday stream is planned to be at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And the Friday stream is planned to be at 9 p.m. Central Time. So yeah, I think that should cover us once again. If we do the Saturday stream, uh, that will be at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, most likely as well. But, you know, probably uh, check out my Twitter to uh, be kept up to date when, with, uh, when things are going to happen. Because, honestly, I don't know, usually, when a stream is going to start until very shortly before it starts. So, yeah, once again, if anyone has any suggestions for our raid... I would be delighted to hear them. I'll give you another minute to think about it if you need to. Sit. Yeah, no suggestions it looks like. So, I think tonight we are going to go and visit uh, Spella. Svella Persera is a Valkyrie VTuber who is playing some Majora's Mask, actually. Yeah, that's a... yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty cool. Yeah, I've played Majora's Mask a little bit. I haven't beaten any, any Legend of Zelda games, but Majora's Mask is probably the one that I've played the most. Yeah, so that'll be interesting to see. Yes, set up the raid. Whoops. Svella Persera. All right, raid is starting. So the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. So yes, thank you all, all, yeah. Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway.